Today, Lesson 33A, uh, yesterday our focus was on adding like expressions. I also told you yesterday that uh, many times that's called combining like terms. Uh, the difference between today and yesterday is that yesterday we were combining like terms where the coefficients uh, were integers. And remember, one of the things we did yesterday is we put names and the terminology to all the various pieces that make up an expression, like terms, like coefficients, like constants, and things like that. Well, the difference today is that all of the coefficients are rational numbers. So as usual, we'll do a little bit of background knowledge here from the things that we've been talking about. Yesterday I gave you a picture like this, and I said, what do you see? That's what I asked you, and I asked you to be very specific. And we came to the conclusion that there were three apples and six oranges and two pencils uh, in that picture. And uh, the commutative property allows us to rearrange things. And when we do that, it's much, much easier to sort of figure out what we have uh, from a picture like that. So collecting or combining all the like items together. And so we took a look at problems like this. And uh, one of the things that we talked about is that sometimes tiles might give us a, a concrete example of what we're talking about. So this would, was one that we looked at yesterday, and I talked about the idea of uh, utilizing zero pairs. Remember, zero pairs make a zero, and that can help us simplify or figure out what our expression simplifies to. In this case, of course, that would be negative 2x. And then we took a look at, uh, we compared that to what happens in integer problems. And so we took a look at that with tiles. And once again, the same idea. We can take a look at zero pairs, get rid of all of our zero pairs, that is. And whatever we have left, that's what our expression uh, simplifies to. So we kept looking at expressions, and the expre uh, expressions kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger in far, as far as the number of terms. And I said one of the things you could do that might help some of you would be to highlight uh, like terms uh, and it just unclutters the mess that you end up with if you have a lot of expressions, or excuse me, a, a lot of terms in your expression. And uh, I'm not saying you have to do that, but I noticed as I was walking around when you were starting your homework yesterday that some of you were doing things like this, okay? And so all of those things still apply no matter what the coefficients are. And I also stated yesterday that it was the commutative property that allows us to do stuff like that. So here we have an expression where we have some decimals in there. So what we do, of course, is exactly the same thing that we did yesterday. We just have to pay a little more attention to what we're doing. So let's do number one together. Uh, I'm going to gather my x's together. So I have negative 2x and a negative 3.9x. Those are like terms. And, of course, those two combine to make negative 5.9x. And then I'm now going to gather my constants together. Remember, if we have a number without a variable multiplied by it, those are referred to as constants. And so we have a positive 9 and a negative 1.2. That is a positive 7.8. So that means that negative 2x plus 9 minus 3.9x Minus 1.2 simplifies to uh, negative 5.9x plus 7.8. Now, one of the other things I stated yesterday was this. The original expression here and this expression are equivalent to each other. They are equivalent to each other. The difference is the original one was not simplified. The one that we found that we're calling the answer, that is the simplified version of the original one. But they still are both equivalent to each other. Okay? I would like everybody to do number two, three, and four. All right, compare your answers uh, on two, three, and four with your shoulder partner. Discuss any mistakes you may have made. Go. All right, how about number two? What'd you get? Let's, let's use the uh, sentence frame up here. I believe that the expression is negative 4.77w plus 17.5. Plus what? 17.5. Uh, is that what your shoulder partner got? Right here. 
Yeah, what would you get for two? Negative 4.77 W plus Yeah, that's one thing we should be doing. If we disagree when we shoulder partner, we should be trying to figure out who's correct and why, okay? Because that does simplify to negative 4.77 W plus uh, 16.5. All right, uh, number three. What What'd you get? Uh, I, I ascertained that the expression is negative 10.7w plus 4.3. Very good. And uh, once again, what we're doing here is we're just combining like terms. Negative 14.7w and 4w, that makes negative 10.7w. And then the positive 11 and negative 6.8, uh, that gives us a positive 4.2 there. So... Uh, that one simplifies to negative 10.7w plus 4.2. All right, and then how about number four? What did you get? Uh, I was just saying that the expression is 7.9c plus 25.8. Did you say that again one more time, please? 7.9c plus 25.8. Is that what you got? Yes? Anybody want to disagree with that? Oh, wait, that is right, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sitting here looking at the wrong problem, sorry. Um, it should be, but why does it say negative right here? Nobody caught that. Nobody caught that third period. That should be positive because we have more positives uh, than we do negatives, okay? That should be positive 7.9c. All right, so uh, decimal coefficients, pretty easy. Now let's take it to... Fractional coefficients, these are all still rational numbers. It doesn't change what we do. It's probably just going to take a little bit longer to do each problem because fractions typically take a little bit longer than, or at least adding and subtracting fractions typically take a little bit longer than adding or subtracting decimals. So we gather our like terms together. So we'll do this one together. Uh, we have a positive 5 ninths x and a negative 1 third x. So the common denominator there is uh, 9. And so the negative 1 third x becomes negative 3 ninths x. So as far as the x's go, we have 2 ninths x. And now for the constants, uh, we have a positive 1 half and a positive 1 fourth. And of course, the common denominator there is 4. And so the 1 half becomes 2 fourths. The 2 fourths, or the 1 fourth is already in fourths. And so that is a positive 3 fourths. So that means that uh, the original expression simplifies to 2 ninths x plus 3 fourths. And one more point, 2 ninths x plus 3 fourths is equivalent to the original expression. It's just that the original expression was not simplified. Okay? Everybody try number 6. All right, let's compare what you have with your shoulder partner. If you disagree, figure out who is correct and why. Go. <laughs> Jessica, what'd you get? Negative 7 over 22 W plus 11 20. Uh, negative 7 20 seconds W plus 11 20, is that what you said? Very good, that's correct. And that comes from, we have 2 elevenths. W and a negative one-half W. The common denominator there is 22. Made a big subtraction symbol there. And uh, that would be 4 20 seconds W minus 11 20 seconds W. And that's where the negative 7 20 seconds W comes from. And then, of course, we have our 3 fourths. And our negative one-fifth, the common denominator there, is 20. And we have uh, 15 twentieths, which is equivalent to three-fourths. And four twentieths is equivalent to uh, one-fifth. And that is where the plus 11 twentieths comes from. So that one simplifies to negative 7 twenty seconds W plus 11 twentieths. All right, let's do number seven. Compare with your shoulder partner. 
Um, the most common mistake, and I mentioned that yesterday, is as we're utilizing the commutative property and sort of doing things out of order, we have to make sure that we take the signs, because when I was walking around, that was, that was the common mistake, is not taking the sign with the number. Uh, for example, that is a negative one-fourth to the right of the two-thirds w. If you don't believe me, add the opposite, you will see that. Uh, but getting back to this problem, the uh, common denominator with the w's is 12. And so we have negative 3 twelfths w for the negative 1 fourth w and uh, 8 twelfths w for the 2 thirds w. That gives us 5 twelfths w, so that's the first part. And then for all of the constants, uh, we have a positive 3 fifths, a negative 1 fourth, and a positive 1 fifth. Common denominator there is 20. The 3 fifths becomes 15 twentieths. The negative 1 fourth because it is a negative one-fourth, that becomes negative five-fourths, and the positive one-fifth becomes positive four-twentieths, uh, and that would give us uh, ten fourteen-twentieths. Hold on a second. That's not right, is it? This is twelve, isn't it? That didn't look right. So that was twelve-twentieths for the very first fraction, so that actually gives us eleven. So that means that this expression simplifies to 5 twelfths w plus 11 twentieths. All right, so the last thing that we need to deal with today is something that we talked about uh, a couple of times already uh, this trimester, and that would be with regards to the fact that what do you do when you have some problems where you have fractions and decimals uh, mixed in together? And the conclusion that we came to was that it's probably better to deal with all fractions than it is all with decimals. And here's a classic example why. Because negative one-third as a decimal is a repeating decimal. And the positive two-thirds is a repeating decimal. And so we end up with something like this. And for some of you, that's a little harder to deal with. It is manageable, but it's a little harder to deal with. And this is what it looks like after you combine like terms there. If you turn them all into fractions, uh, we would end up with something like this. And then it just becomes like a problem that we just dealt with in number 5 and 6 and 7, and it ends up looking like this. But one thing I want to make very clear, the theme lately has been equivalent expressions. This is equivalent to this. They represent the same values, okay? They represent the same value. So they are equivalent to each other. I just think at this point right now, it's probably easier if most of you convert things to fractions. So I would like everybody to do number, oh, this is number eight, isn't it? Is this number eight? Yeah. Okay, so this is number eight. So I guess I don't want you to do number eight because we just, I just did number eight for you. Uh, go ahead and do number nine. Very good. That is correct. And uh, where that comes from is, I'm just going to get this one started because the rest should be self-explanatory. Uh, that's negative 7 tenths m, and this is negative 1 fourth. And then from there, of course, combine your like terms right there, and combine your like terms right here, which are the constants, and that's what we should end up with. Okay? Any questions with number 9? All right, do number 10, same idea. What'd you get? Plus what? Plus two fifths. Um, so I saw some people with, first of all, let me, let me bring up what it should be, which would be plus four-fifths. It, it seems to me like it was that last, it was all the constants that seemed to be the biggest issue there. We have a positive 1.1, we have a negative one-half, and we're going to end up with a positive 0 0.2 right there. So if we do what I have said to do, 1.1 is 1 and 1 tenth, which is 11 tenths. 
Uh, then we're subtracting essentially 5 tenths. And then we're adding 2 tenths. And so that would be 8 tenths. And that's where we end up with this right here. Now, a few, of, a few people also had this as their answer for that expression. Uh, would that be okay? Uh-oh. Would that be okay? No. Well, let me ask a different question. Is 4 fifths equivalent to 0 0.8? Yes. Okay, then it would be okay. I mean, I, my suggestion of converting everything to fractions is just to help you, especially when you end up with fractions that convert to uh, repeating decimals if you try to convert everything to decimals. That's all it is. This is equivalent to this. Therefore, it's okay, as long as it means the same thing. Okay? All right, last question for today, number 11. The question is, which of those are equivalent to negative 3 eighths x plus 2.75? And a hint, there may be more than one answer. Work on that problem with your shoulder partner, please. So here, here's the deal. Uh, some of you are, you know, I know some, in some of your cl other classes, you may still take multiple choice tests. Uh, that's not supposed to be really happening very much anymore, but I know that it still does. And so you're used to, when you see multiple choices like this, you're used to there just being one answer. And once you find that one answer, you're done and you go on to the next problem, right? Well, we're going to start seeing problems like this where there may be more than one answer. And here's the deal. In this one, uh, I saw some of you. You went, all right, B works, so I'm finished. Because that must be the only one that's equivalent to that, but that's not true. Which other one is equivalent to that? C also is equivalent. So both B and C simplify to negative 3 eighths x plus 2.75. That means they are equivalent to each other. Okay? All right, we are finished for today.